Red. Uh, yet again, uh, one more of the MTB's retail uh, elite boxes. Uh, so again, um, I figured why the heck not. I'm going to do these every month. I'm going to grab one of these retail uh, boxes in a different number. This one is 75. The last one I did was 76. Um, and uh, I'm going to hunt down 96 next. So if I can find that in the store, I'll grab 96. Um, <clears throat> till then, until I can find 96, uh, I'm just gonna go <laughs> through these. So we've got number 75. If you don't know what this is, this is basically an in-store version of the monthly MTB uh, subscription Elite Series box. So it's the same basic platform, the Elite platform, of the MTV, but rather than wait uh, each month to have it delivered in the mail, you go out to your local store and you can pick these up right there, uh, cash in hand. Each one of these red sleeves hides a standard beige box, but that's where the beige ceases to continue because this is not your standard MTB. All right. Let's see what we've got in this number 76 MTB Elite Tackle Box. Retail sale. Oh. All right, we got some similar things to what we got in the last box in number 76. So let's, uh, oh, I can smell it. There's definitely a soft plastic in here with some scent because <laughs> you're getting definitely a waft of uh, bait fish smell coming out of this cardboard. All righty, let's hunt down with the paperwork. We have ourselves another MTB sticker, standard sticker, not as fancy as the monthly ones. The monthly ones, you get some nice artistic uh, stickers like you see up here behind me. Um, but, uh, you know, these retail ones, you're just going to get a pretty much bland sticker, evidently, from the three that I've opened so far. This one's a Dibble Digest. We do get a Dibble just like in the monthly ones. Um, it's going to be the exact same one we got last time. Uh, how to tie a, t a Palomar knot, when to use a casting rod as opposed to spinning gear. Um, typically for me, spinning gear is salt water, light tackle. Casting rod, accuracy, fresh water. Um, unless I'm, you know, using a conventional reel out deep sea fishing, <clears throat> which is similar to a uh, bait caster. So those are the two top things. I'm going to look in here. It has a a box card, or maybe this one doesn't. Ooh, uh oh. Oh, MTB, you messed up. This one does not have a what's in the box card. Okay, okay. So this is gonna be a little bit more difficult. All right, so anyway. There is no what's in the box card in this one. In the last two, there was. It did not uh, give you a delineation of the price, but it did give you a name and a brand, etc. So we'll just start at the top of this and work our way down, and we'll just go from there. Um, I'll try to search out and uh, get some prices. Uh, obviously, things that I can quote from the last box or last one of the two, or things that I may have gotten in here that I've gotten in past MTB monthly subscriptions, I can kind of give you a little information on those. So first off, we got another Rattle and Googly Eye football jig. This one is a 5 sixteenths ounce, and the color on this one is going to be green pumpkin. So what this is, just like the last box that I opened, um, is a football head jig, pop it open here, with a rattle chamber, glass rattle chamber that they use 
to form the eyes in this football. So there's your football head. You see these two little glass eyes. Gives you a 3D eye impression. But that glass tube straight through is also a rattle chamber. So you can hear that uh, rattling along in there. And you've got your, your uh, free-swinging football head jig. So it's a free hook. Um, I believe this is a 2 watt. Um, let's double check here. Let's see if it says. <clears throat> Definitely looks like a 2 watt. 516 screen pumpkin doesn't give you a size. I'm going to say it's a 2 watt. Uh, EWG worm hook on a free swing football head jig. Great, um, great jig. I love the fact that they use that rattle chamber for the eyelets. Um, that's a pretty awesome addition to my tackle arsenal. I don't typically use a lot of free, uh, free swinging jigs, um, even football heads. I just use basically the standard football heads, skirted or unskirted. I like that I, I can I run a weedless. Five sixteenths, never never go wrong with some football heads. So I can quote this price from the last thing. I'll have that linked in the uh, expansion when you do the see more. Uh, next, another jig. This is a quarter ounce red gill from Lifted Jigs. Three odd hook. This is a micro hook. Um, it's a premium skirt, chip resistant paint. And again, as I said, this is a quarter ounce swim jig with that slim swim profile and I will tell you this color they have uh, which they do not list catch more Facebook YouTube yada yada I guess it's red gill so this red gill color you have the blue gill kind of yellow and 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 whatnot with this red and uh, green pumpkin it's got a doubled, well, I won't say double barb, but a ringed lead keeper. So it's molded into the jig head, but it's ring ribbed here to catch your soft plastic trailer. Probably really good for a chunk or a little worm, uh, you know, a little uh, grub. Weed guard, that's good, keeps it weedless. And again, there's those red strands along with those little flashes of uh, like an off yellow and green pumpkin. Uh, I'm going to say this is awesome for this time of year. Um, 40 and 50 degree water. I think our water today just hit 50 degrees at its average, <clears throat> which is great for the pre-spawn. Awesome time to be throwing those red lipless cranks. Um, anything red, in fact. So right there, that red is going to attract those fish uh, Super, super, super time to throw red baits in this pre-spawn period. Um, definitely like it. Definitely going to check this out uh, in, in a few days when I can get a chance to get back on the water. I've been working seven-day weeks, so that hasn't been uh, real easy for me. But I'm looking forward to that. Lifted Jigs is a pretty good brand. You know, they're not premium, but uh, i got to say I do like, I like the designs of their things. I like their color schemes. And this is another one that actually fits the bill, especially this time of year. So that's pretty cool. Next up, from Excavator, which is a Catchco brand. These are a little bit of a hard hat jig shaky head. This is more traditional shaky head than the last ones I previewed with uh, that I actually put into the giveaway. Um, this is your standard shaky head that I've used with the screw lock keepers. Uh, I don't really like these. I like the ones that I supplied you in the giveaway where the screw lock keeper is actually, um, it's separate, it's its own little spring that connects to the eyelet, and this allows you to go way more weedless and expose the, uh, the plat soft plastic, as, to both these where the, um, as opposed to these, which has the screw lock keeper molded into the head, and it holds it there, and then you end up kind of bending your soft plastic trailer over in order to get it to expose in that hook because you're screwing it on here and then you're kind of flexing it over to get it to get, to get that hook point buried in it. I don't know, I like those. But there's a two pack with a four aught in the black nickel plate, um, black heads. The heads on hard hat uh, lures are awesome. They don't really chip out really well. I've, I've hit them off of rocks a lot and I haven't had too much chipping or splitting of the heads or anything like that. It's a really good brand. Um, 
a re really good supply from Ketchco. Next, another one from uh, David Dudley. These are some of the best stand-ups if you're ever fishing for, with, you know, craws. I suggest going with these. Brush baby brush hogs, definitely go with these. Um, there was a lantana. Make sure that it stands up every single time. Uh, I've never had a problem. Again, they suggest using lizards and tubes. I would never use a tube on this. Uh, but, you know, your shaky head worm, um, you know, little finesse worms, uh, definitely crawl trailers, uh, uh, little baby brush hogs, some, you know, standard uh, oddball kind of creature baits. Uh, these look, these work great. This is a 3 16 uh, I can't recall what the other one was, but I don't believe the other one I had was 3 16 So uh, another great, great addition. So we've got two jig heads, the uh, shaky head, and actually three if you think about it. You got the football head, you got the stand up, you got the shaky head. What's that tell you? This box is definitely a, uh, uh, you know, a bottom heavy, at least from that standpoint, bottom heavy bait box. Only one mid column in this swim, swim jig. Next up, we've got a gordito. <laughs> it's my, my wife says I should be a gordito. Uh, gordito 50. This is a 13 or 1-3 fishings. Um, prank bait. 7 foot diving. Super mega certified. Whatever the hell that means. Do love. This is a post pre-spawn early summer, mid late spring color scheme. So this right here is what I would use spawn, post spawn, uh, like I said, early, early summer, late spring, after the pre-spawn, because this has got that muted down crawfish, that dark green, it's still got a hue of red on it, a little orange to the bottom. It's a translucent not transparent, but, you know, just about see-through. You can kind of catch the, the light through it. Translucent um, color scheme with the crawfish pattern. Uh, Seven-foot diver. So this is as they're transitioning back into deeper water. Um, great when the water is really, really hot, and they got to get off those shallows where it's too hot for them, and they start going down into those low-line humps. Um, awesome bait. Another great one. And 1-3 fishing. I'm not really... Uh, Used to their baits, you know, I'm, I'm, it, to me, 1-3 is fishing equipment, not necessarily fishing tackle. So it'll be interesting to see how this uh, plays out, but uh, eh, I'll definitely give it a shot. Um, floating, which is awesome. So if this hits off of a rock or stump or something and stops dead, give it a second, pause it, let it deflect, let it bounce off, and let it float back up slowly, and then you can work it back down if you get hung up. Give it a second, see if it'll float three, and then you can work it back down to depth again. Um, not bad. Uh, so you, again, it's a two inch, three eighths ounce, seven foot with a uh, with a number three and number six hooks. So you got number three in the front and a number six on the trailer. Awesome crawfish pattern. VMC hook, definitely sharp. I'm a big, uh, I like owners, I like VMC. So that's cool. Happy to have that added to my crankbait arsenal. <clears throat> Next, we're going to some soft plastics. So here is something that I would probably use on just a, on a on a I don't know big bike baits, warm mouth baby bullhead in a three and a half inch. So let's see here. Oh, this is one of those tear across. So these are little soft plastic uh, swim baits. Very nice, realistic color. I'll say that. Good color pattern. So you got these little soft plastic, nice little clear plaster saw fan tails. Awesome 3D style eyes. And there's just that hue of red flake in there. You can catch it glimmering every once in a while. Definitely gives you that warm mouth, bluegill hybrid. Because it's definitely got like the the warm mouth mouth, the warm mouth face on there. Coming right at you. So that's awesome. Short profile. It's got a little nib here. This is like flared out flat. You can see it spans out. So that's a really good place to uh, to text expose that hook for hook placement. So you'd work it right through the center of that and be able to subset it just flush. So it makes it pretty well weedless. 
I think that's how I'd rig it. Definitely nice. Not bad. Quantity of four. So that's a small, small quantity, but it's a very, you know, good, good profile. Definitely something interesting. Uh, I do have a, a good quantity of uh, semi-photorealistic or realistic style soft plastic baits. Um, I tend to care more about realistic paint schemes on things like my crank baits and my swim baits, my hard baits, more so than soft plastics because typically the soft plastics I go are trailers to jigs. So, but it is interesting uh, to keep a, a few of these, especially if you are really having a hassle um, catching uh, the fish. You can you can downsize to something like this uh, and swim it weightless on a on a Texas I mean, on a Texas rigged we, uh, hook and uh, see if you can't finagle some fish. Uh, you know, slowing down and, and just giving them another presentation uh, opposed to that that fast ripping or even slow rolling hard baits. It gives you something more pliable and soft um, for that. Next, another, uh, you know, catch code. There's a lot of catch code stuff in here, actually. Uh, another, which tends to reason. I mean, it is their, their corporation, their baits. So we've got some worms. This is Carl's Amazing Bait. I have no name for these. It's just a package. Again, they, they lack the card. So I can't tell you exactly what these are, but these are just basically a ribbon tail worm. And, uh... Purple candy, grape candy, whatever you want to call it. Got some, it's got a purple hue, purple green hue with some green, gold, silver flake in there. Ribbon tails, Texas rigged, slow drug on the bottom, cold water, definitely good. I would go for more of a red hue than a green. Um, maybe for dirty stained water, this would work well. Uh, purple isn't a color I throw a lot. Pinks, reds, whites, green pumpkins. Those are the colors I throw. Uh, black, blue occasionally, but uh, purple, not really my, my go-to color scheme. That said, not bad. Good, uh, good count. Let's see, we've got three, six, nine. I think it's a ten count bag, so that's a good quantity. Carl's Amazing Baits, Ribbon Tail Worms. Next, again, 10,000 fishes. Watermelon Red, these are the seven pack of... Infuse Scent Max Action Saw Crawls. Love these guys. Crawfish for the win. So this is what I smell. This is the bait fishes. Max Scent. Infused Scent and Salt. Definitely stink. <laughs> so you got some green pumpkin with black flake. They're calling it watermelon red. Okay, there's red in there. So green pumpkin with red flake and black flake in there. Or watermelon with red flake and green. To me, green pumpkin's just a little bit darker, like you see in the main body. Darker. And then it it turns to watermelon when it's more translucent and more of a neonish green, like you can see in the claws, only because the material's thinned out. Um, they're interchangeable to me, the two colors, green pumpkin, watermelon. Uh, that's just me. Just like PB&J and pumpkin. Pumpkin is more of an off yellow, orange, brown. PB&J is an orange brown to me um, for the peanut butter color of, of PB&J. So these those two patterns to me can be pretty interchangeable. Um, I mean, if you really want to be nuanced, you know, if you've ever had to paint a room on your wife's whim, you know, well, that's not plum. That's this. That's okay. It's it's red or purple or whatever. You know, <laughs> red is red to me. I don't need 37 names for red. I just call it red. But that is what it is. So uh, I'm just going to put these away so I'm not stinking out the entire house. Wow. Definitely a strong, strong attractant. Which is good because that's going to take our pheromones, our scent, off of them. And uh, maybe the fish will be more apt to strike. So there you go. I, I'd use these uh, for punching and flipping. Certainly these would go awesome on the David Dudleys. Because these will definitely stand up, especially if they're even semi-buoyant. Um, these will work well. Maybe I'll throw a, a tank test uh, a little later and film that and show you some a couple of different crawl baits, maybe some some uh, ribbon tail worms, and show you how they react in the water. Since I've I've got the old tank over there and haven't really been putting it to much use on camera. Um, next up, something that's totally not right now, but coming up in the next month or two. 
Guggenbait's Filthy Frog. Now, I have one of these. Uh, not, I don't think it's in this color, but I'll have to check. But Guggen Squad Baits, another Catch Co. collaboration. I'm not going to take this out because it's taped. And if I do have it in this color, I might just add this to my giveaway. But if I don't, I'll keep it because black, white, green. Black, white, chartreuse. Those are the colors of frogs I do. So a white belly, this one's all black. So a black belly, white belly, and a chartreuse greenish, orange, yellow. Those colors are the, are the only colors that I really care about for a frog. I don't care about leopard skin patterns on the back or the words eat me on the back. No, the fish don't see this unless it's rolled over. And if it's rolled over, it's a bad frog design. You want it to land flat each time so you can walk it each time. You don't want to constantly be hassled trying to get your bait lands, you know, bass backwards, and you have to reel it back in and cast it again. It's a wasted cast. Um, they call this nightclub, all black, neon green, Guggen Squad eyes. Awesome. I will say the eyes being green, hit them with the black light. I bet you they glow pretty darn nice. Um, two and a half inch, five eighths ounce. Not bad. Filthy frogs. Watch the videos. People catch all the time on these. They did do a very good design. Can't, can't fault them for that. And finally, another name we know and trust, and something that I actually know I have, and I'll double check if I have this color. So this is the Weston's Stick Worm. So it's their version of their Senko. This is uh, the five inch Weston's Stick Worm in black blue. Again, this has a really neat design where it's like a hand pour. It's got a uh, uh, it's just got a really interesting setup. You can wacky rig this. I would Texas rig it. I would throw these on on these shaky heads here. These uh, free free uh, hook shaky head swing free swing hook ball jigs. Um, just because the action on the tail, this is a little bit more firm a plastic than I'm accustomed to on a five four or, or so inch worm. Uh, again, these are five inch. I think it's a little stiff for a five inch worm just on a jig, so putting it on a free hook, a free swing, allows the tail to whip back and forth, give you a lot more action uh, for the summer. So that's pretty cool. So just a real recap, we got the Western Sticks, we've got the David Dudley Always Stand Up Jig Heads, which is a good thing, the Hard Hats Shaky Heads, traditional shaky head jigs in black or four aughts, we got the Kalins Rattling Googly Eye Swing Hook, swing, uh, Free Swinging, um, jigs football jigs we got that lifted swim jig and that's an awesome color that uh, that'll go very well this time of year the Guggen's eat me top water we've got that awesome one three fishings crankbait with uh, which is a really cool seven foot diver we've got the craws which stink but they're awesome they don't stink in catching fish they just stink in your hand we've got the ribbon tail worms from Carl's amazing always good and we've got these really awesome three and a half inch warm mouth soft plastics that is a really awesome box um, I'm gonna say I like the last box I did a fair bit more but uh, in here I think the best the best baits I, I know of is gonna be the saw craws um, definitely that hard crankbait because I just like crankbaits and uh, I'm really really interested to try these warm mouths out so tell me what do you think about this box you think this was a winner? You think it was a dud or a stud? So uh, give me your honest opinions, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, maybe uh, in a short bit of time we'll be out on the water and get some actual action videos if I can get some time off <laughs> and get some time to film. Um, with all that said, yeah, I'll, I'll probably throw up a couple of videos in the near future of some tank tests showing you since we did last uh last month we did a few finesse questions i'll show you a few of my favorite finesse um, baits in the water here in the tank where it's more controlled and you can see and i can explain exactly why i like them one in particular is um, a marabou finesse jig so marabou hair finesse jigs with flash or without on certain trailers i just like the way they they blossom they're natural um the way they land and they will they're, they're just little finesse baits that, for finicky fish, if nothing else is biting, something that I've learned is you go marabou. If you can't catch them normal, go for a marabou. And 
you're guaranteed to get bites. You might not get monsters, you might get the biggest bass of your life, but you'll get bites nonetheless. It's just something about the natural way that it puffs up and it's just that pulsation that the hair gives you uh, over the lifelike rubbers and the, you know, the, all that other stuff. Um, it's just so natural and that's all I can explain. So uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I hope you're sharing these with your friends. I hope you can interest others into getting into the passion of fishing. And uh, as always for me to you, I appreciate you spending a little time with me. Thanks a lot for coming along this journey. As always, I'll catch you on the next cache, hookaholics. Peace. <laughs>